<laughs> Mommy, look. So long. Yeah. Somebody. Yeah, there's balloons. There's boats. Go, go. Ah. Baby. Mommy. There's, there's more than one balloon. There's a bunch of balloons that are floating by. You think somebody's inside of it? I like it. I can't see this. Mm -hmm. I want the TV. Want it? Which Here. one? Come on. With yeah. the lion? Just so <laughs> With the bear? Look, look, with the bear? You can smell it. I don't see those, honey. Which one? Mm hmm? Simple. Is that what you said? Simple. Simple. Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Good morning, good night, good evening, wherever you are. No, it's actually night for us. It's about some minutes to nine. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not going to talk much. This is for Dan. This video, I'm just sitting in. I'm just sitting in. Dan asked me to sit in and that's what I'm doing. This is not my place, not my video. This is for that entirely. So I'm just going to give you the mic. Oh, thank you for the mic. <laughs> you probably remember uh, roughly about three years ago, this little one was born, <laughs> you know, and I was at an age and now I'm 69 going on 70. <laughs> and I'm still here, still going. And you see, she's just a bundle of joy. And you know, as I, as I look back on things, I know that uh, I'm not the only one. I know there's uh, men out there, older men, who have a age, an age gap marriage uh, that are probably having kids or thinking about having kids. If you take it from me, I would say, go for it. Yeah, <laughs> really. Go for it. I, yeah, go for it. You know, at, seek God, first of all. Seek God's wisdom, first of all. And you and your partner, you and your wife, I should say, and uh, uh, and find out what his will is for you. And then once you understand what his will is, don't let nobody turn you away from it. Abraham, at least some of it. You know, where uh, he had Isaac, before that he had a Ishmael, who was not part of the promise. You know, because him and Sarah got a little anxious, not waiting on God to move on, uh, on their behalf. And finally God moved when Abraham was about uh, 99 years old. Sarah was a, a little bit younger than him. Finally had Isaac, which was the promised child. You know, but, you know, after some time, Abraham gave everything he had to Isaac, right? And then Sarah died, okay? So after that, Abraham was wandering around. He ran into a woman called Keturah, which I understand, I thought it was his wife for a long time. It turned out to be his concubine. Okay, but anyway, Couture gave him five sons. And then, you know, he raised them and stuff. And later on, uh, he uh, uh, died at like 175 years old. Elizabeth, she had John at a, at a, at a uh, late age, you know. She had her husband was older. Uh, King David. You know, there was a lot of people that had uh, children at that time. And in their old age, as far as men are concerned, the word of God, which I stand on, and I truly believe, He says, "Blessed is the man who has his quiver full." Now, for a long time, I thought quiver meant house. <laughs> Actually, as I dove into the word, I found that that means it was like a pouch that carried weapons and stuff. And so, as I further read that that particular scripture, I think it's uh, Psalms one twenty seven. Uh, it talked about uh, ammunition and stuff that was kept in a pouch. And so having all these little ammunitions, these kids around me, <laughs> you know, which quite frankly, I thought I was finished at 40 uh, uh, with having more kids. You know, I went through a divorce and stuff, had two kids. But uh, 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 the deal is, after 10 years, I said, you know what? I really don't want to be out here uh, single, I, I need to get married. You know, so I prayed for a wife, and then 
I didn't know on the other side of the world uh, the wife that was going to be my wife. She was praying for a person like me. I would I asked God to give me somebody that that He chose. You know? So all of a sudden we meet up, and it's a younger person. I didn't seek after a younger wife. You know, I really wasn't. But this is what God told me or led me to do, and we became friends, and then we later got married. You know. And so now here I am, five more children. So I guess that makes a total of seven. Man, I got enough for a basketball team. <laughs> you know. But uh, it's it's like, well, where do you get the strength from? Well, it says the word says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Okay, for one thing, and then. Even when I thought that it was all over, it seemed like the Lord said, not yet. I still got more for you to do. And more children. So that made a total of five. I already have two. You know, seven kids. But God gives me the strength. Yeah, I got to take a nap sometime when she's running around the three-year-old. Uh, when she's running around, you know, just doing stuff. I can't, I can't go to sleep until she goes to sleep. If I try to take a nap and she's up, she likes to climb on my head and, you know, try to open my eyes, tell me, Daddy, wake up. You know, because she thinks I'm a play thing, <laughs> you know, which is okay. You know, but, you know, like I said, God gives me the strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me daily. And that's what he's been doing. He strengthens me daily. He uh, uh, makes me enjoy the fact that I have all these kids. It causes me to enjoy these children, to watch them grow to see yeah. the changes in their lives and stuff from, you know, from a baby to adult, young adult, or from three years old to four. It's a joy, <laughs> you know, you know, I'm smiling a lot lately. This, you know, before I thought it was going to be difficult. I mean, let's get serious. Let's get, let's get real. I thought it was going to be strenuous. I thought I was going to run out of patience, all kinds of stuff. But, I can't, I don't have time to run out of patience. <laughs> you know? It's just been fun and stuff. This little girl runs around. She Now she says stuff like, run away, run away. When yeah. I'm trying to chase her down because she didn't grab my phone or something. <laughs> you know? And then when I get too close, she throws it. <sighs> I've gone through two phones so far. <laughs> but you know, looking back at it, it's still fun. It's still a joy because now she's she's uh, potty trained and stuff like that. She's 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 holding conversation, she has a little personality, she's doing expressions and stuff. It's just amazing. Yeah. Throughout this whole journey, I've always relied on God. It's, I have to, you know, because sometimes you can, you can get physically tired and stuff, but it's the Lord that revives me, you know, either while I'm sleeping or either, even through the day while I'm uh, uh, running around chasing Alexander down. Yes. <laughs> you know, because she just loves to run and stuff. But uh, uh, it's just a blessing to have all these kids. For these young kids, you know, I think my youngest uh, son is is, is uh, 12. He's 12 years old. You know, so I, I don't have any grandchildren yet, but I got a whole spectrum of, ch of children. I got teenagers. I got young adults. I got adults. <laughs> you know, the, the whole gamut. God's seen it fit for me to do this. You know, he strengthens me daily, as the word says. And he causes me to enjoy the fruits of my labor. Yeah. You know, I can sit back, like the word uh, talks about the children being like olive trees. You know, man, I got a bunch of olive trees. I think I'm going to go into the olive oil business. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, it's, 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 it's none like I, I, I had thought it would be. It's been fun. I'm still amazed that the fact that it's amazing to me. I thought I was going to be, oh my God, all these kids, man. I don't know what I'm going to do. But with every child, God has anointed me. He's given me more strength. He's given me more a deeper wisdom, understanding, you know, and to the point where I was like, come on, bring them on. Bring some more children on. <laughs> Tiffany's not into that right now. <laughs> so, as most of you know, or you may not know, I'm a chef. Okay, so I love getting, I still enjoy getting up cooking for the whole family, for the kids and stuff. I know exactly which, what they like, what they don't like, you know. Yeah. And uh, they 
would, would, would prefer for me to cook for them, at least in breakfast time, yes. than their mom. <laughs> and they said, no, we won't leave. Is, is daddy up? Where is he at? <laughs> you know? So I enjoy all that. I mean, I, uh, I'll, I'll wash clothes, you know, so I know all their different clothes and stuff. And that's, that in itself is a challenge. Yeah. You know, because I got, what, four girls here? <laughs> four, yeah, four girls here. I'm not calling, calling my wife a girl. You know, she's a woman. It's downtime for me to wash, man. You know, separating the colors and stuff. <laughs> you enjoy you know? doing it. Yeah, I do. I yeah. really do, you know. And it gives her a break to do what she needs to do and stuff like that. And it's not that she doesn't wash. She she wash. But uh, I... If, I don't wash down. <laughs> I was trying to make you look good. <laughs> person like to see things get done. And it's hard for me to sit back without things getting done. I like to get things done. So at nighttime before we go to sleep, I may load the, the uh, washing machine, put the soap in there and stuff like that. And then in the morning time, if she's asleep, by the time I get up, I'll just start the washing machine. And, and get things going. Because that's how I am. I like to see stuff get done. I like to see stuff uh, to have an easy day, as I call it. Yeah. You know, so that, that's just what I do. And like I said, God has uh, anointed me and given me the strength you know, to do all these things and enjoy it. You know, because one could try to go through this miserable, and I'm telling you, that won't work. They won't, you be arguing, you be fussing and fighting, you be angry get all kind of lines in your face and stuff and frustration. So we don't, we want to avoid those things, you know. As long as I live a stress-free life, and you know, the only way to do that is to keep your mind stayed on Christ, right? Because uh, uh, then he'll give you that peace. And plus, whatever you need, just go to the Father, because he's our source and our supply. It says that he supply all I need according to his riches and glory. By Christ. When I was in my 20s, 30s, even up to my 50s, you know, I had a lot more energy than what I do now, you know, but uh, the deal is that I've gotten older heading towards 70. You know, I'm not running down 70, but I'm really close. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've, I, I've kind of slowed down a little, you know, and, uh, you know, there's, there's time I get tired, whatever, so I just take a nap, you know. Uh, the only thing, <laughs> you know, why the babies? That's the honest truth, yeah, especially with babies. Alexandra. Yeah. She wear you all the time. Yeah, she does, you know, but that's not bad because, you know, like I said before, it's the Lord that strengthens me, okay? Yeah. And the only thing that I have regret as far as uh, 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 raising a, a child that's three years old is those songs from that other country, they play in my head. You know the one with the big heads? <laughs> you know. Song all with the other children. Yeah, I did. Because That's true. You watch their cartoons. That's true. Songs, That's true. So Thank you for it's reminding me. It's just that it's just a different. That's absolutely country. right. I've, I've sang songs. Even, even my 42 year old daughter will remember the time that we was at this uh, uh, fair and I sang the Animaniac song. <laughs> with all this, I can say that. I've learned, I've learned, understood, I've understood the word patience. I've understood the word, uh, well, not long-suffering. <laughs> You're in a long suffering. <laughs> you want to talk about the times that Alexander was beating me in my head and stuff. I feel sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that may be long-suffering. Teenage, teenage girls, that's a little bit, but that's another story. <laughs> it's, been, it's, it's been a joy ride, I should say. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit, too. Love, joy, peace. <laughs> you know? So I've learned all those things. Uh, all the fruits of the Spirit is working in my life, and, and, and it manifests through the raising of these children. Yeah. You know, they really are a blessing. Just to, and then you know, it's like Alexander is three, but I know how she's going to act when she's seven. Because I've seen it all before. And they tend to do the same things at a certain age. Teenagers, you know, they flex in their little independence at times. Yeah. You hear the calm teenager, God bless you. <laughs> Girls especially. No, our boys, they're... Boys are usually cool, but yeah. you know, uh, yeah. in today's society, you really have to be uh, vigilant 
yes. far as putting man things into them and, and the things that guide them to them because you don't want them to go astray and do uh, stuff that's going to cause them uh, cause them harm. Yeah. You know, so you really have to be diligent with that. And girls too because uh, uh, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world. So it's, it's you know, so your kids are martial arts school. But the whole natural thing about self-defense and martial arts is, is good. Okay, because I went through that myself. However, I found that the Word of God works a thousand times better. I mean, because uh, most of the stuff, I mean, in our belief, yeah. you know, things happen in the spiritual realm and then they manifest in the natural realm. So if you shut off the, the danger in the, natu in the, in the uh, spiritual realm, it's got to manifest in the natural realm. So that's why we speak the Word over them, we pray for them, we cover them with the blood and stuff, you know, with our mouth saying the blood of Jesus on them, stuff like that. So, <clears throat> and then particularly the word, because God is only going to confirm his word. He's not going to confirm some stuff that we say like, you know, uh, no harm come to you, sticks and stones will break your bones, but words, you know, none of that stuff. Just the word of God, really. That's what you got to speak over your children because they're, they're your offspring, they're your seed, you're blessed. You know, they, they're, a, they're your heritage. You're going to carry your name on long after you're gone. Okay, so you want to speak the word on them so they be blessed, so they be protected. We have a covenant with the God who created everything. Yeah. He created everything. There's nothing that he didn't create. And if he didn't create it, we don't know nothing about it. He's God. He can do everything. He, you know, God's everywhere. So when you speak his word, that placed him there. Well, he's there to hear your word. And then he watches over to perform it. Okay? So I heard a man say, God ain't got to go nowhere to be everywhere. That is exactly true. You know, he's everywhere. He's every breed. He's everywhere. Another thing, the Word of God says that we're supposed to train up our child in the way that they should go. As far as the, the way of righteousness, the way of the kingdom of God. And it says that when they get old, they won't depart from it. I know a lot of times they look like they're not paying attention while you're talking to them about God. But l listen to me, they, they're hearing it. Because if you think about it, when a, when a child is born, they're, they, they may not be able to express to you uh, uh, love or whatever, but their spirit can receive anything that you say to them about God. Because the spirit is already mature as far as the natural is concerned. That this has to be uh, uh, fed the word of God so it can grow and grow and grow and then you know the understanding comes to the mind and then you know you're an adult but they will receive the word of God our daughter our three-year-old runs around this house when she gets to the when she gets up in the morning she actually binds and loose all kind of devils and stuff every day for the last 20 days <laughs> she's been binding and loosing you know don't and she has favorite uh, songs that Give honor and praise to God, you know, as kids, is that uh, it's really beneficial for them and us and for us as a family to to uh, uh, instill praise and worship. Like we have a worship night. Uh, we get up and we praise God and we uh, read Him a word. You know, and this 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 grounds them. This this get them uh, grounds them to the things of God. And as they continue to grow in these things, man, this. It's amazing the results that you get from this constantly putting the Word of God. And then when they hear something that's off or strange on TV or outside of these, these walls, you know, they know exactly where it's coming from. Yeah. They, they compare like we do, is this, is this godly or is this not godly? And doing all these things, it's not guaranteeing that they're not going to mess up because if you recall, God gives us a, a free choice. Uh, he's, he doesn't impose his will on us, per se. He doesn't force us to, mm -hmm. to be obedient. He gives us a free will. So as children grow into teenagers, like I said, they're exercising their little independence and stuff. They may make some mistakes. But, you know, as, as, a, as a father, you, you continue to pray for your children. You can continue to instill the word into them. Because what you planted in them as a little child, it's got to grow. It will grow. Okay, God gives the increase. Somebody else may water it, even though you planted it, but it will grow. And they'll get to the point where 
they'll look back and say, man, that was just, that was just stupid, <laughs> you know. And, and pretty soon they're teaching their own kids, uh, have them have devotion and, and praise and worship times every night and because they'll understand them. That's yeah. why the word says, train up a child in the way it should go. When he gets old, it won't depart from him. It may stray to the left or the right because we all make mistakes, okay, as we grow, you know. But then because the word was implanted into us as a young age and stuff, it comes back to us and it delivers us. It rescues us. It convicts us, which is what the word is supposed to do, and causes us to go towards salvation. Don't be discouraged when they when you're talking to them and they kind of like look like they somewhere else. <laughs> you know, they're not. They're listening. They're just trying to give you a hard time. Old person, you know, believe in God or, or seeking God for uh, whether or not you should have children. Just continue to seek Him and, and get His will. Even if you're a woman, like in your fifties, which you know, I had friends that were forty and had their first child. You know, so. I don't think it's it's that much of an age difference, 40 and 50, okay? Not even 60 nowadays. It's, it's what God, God's the giver of life, okay? This His will that you have a child, believe me, you're going to have a child, yeah. okay? And, and nothing can stop that. Nothing can interrupt that. Now, I'm not talking about uh, some child that, that's deformed or handicapped. You'll have a perfectly uh, well and healthy child. Because it's God's will. He's the giver of life. Nobody comes on this planet except he sanctions it. Okay? So if God says, well, <clears throat> you're going to have a child at 65, just get ready. Start buying baby clothes. Okay? Because that's the way it is. Uh, God's, uh, all things are possible with God. Yeah. But when you start uh, relying on science and, and the voices of other people who are not in faith with you, uh, it's not going to be possible because you're going to get into doubt. You can't please God by doubt. You please Him by faith and by really trusting that what He told you or what He said, yes, I'll give it to you, that that's going to come to pass. So whatever you and your spouse agree to do and pray about and believe God for, just do it. Because God, according to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, that He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you may ask or even dare to think in some version. You know, God is, he's beyond possible. <laughs> he's possibility. <laughs> you know? I hear the sound of my little one up <laughs> there, upstairs. It's time. So mm -hmm. we have to close all this video. Yes, let's close it out. She's um, ready actually to sleep, is sir. Oh yeah, it's her bedtime. Yep. Which means it's my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> then I have to get his early night sleep yeah, I get and his early, early morning wake up yeah. and his afternoon nap. Mm, yeah. Crazy. Mm -hmm. So it's foolish for a man to go to bed late and rise up early. Yes. So I'm just trying to stay obedient to the word. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you once again for watching. Um, Please don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to our channel, like and share. <laughs> and if you, you didn't enjoy this video, you like it. Mm. Um, we love and appreciate you. Hope to catch you in our next video. Huh? No, I've said we do. I was great. Oh, okay. Hope to catch you in our next video. And please don't forget to remember to walk, walk in, in love, love, stay, stay in love, love, and stay, stay connected, connected to, to God. God. And you do have a good night. Bye-bye. Good night.